This lecture is about preoperative preparation and pre-medication of patients going to surgery. The goals of preoperative pre pre preparation and pre-medication is evaluation of the physical state of the patient, anticipation of any possible complication during the operative and post-operative periods, reduce patient's anxiety, because every patient going to undergo a surgery is, of course, worried about this. And to take an informed consent. Uh, we have to make a preoperative visit to the patient and see or see the patient. If it is young and fit patient by... Uh, seen by the surgery as such, uh, it, uh, we visit him uh, one day before surgery. But if he is an old patient, we have to see him earlier than this. Each patient should be identified by name, age, hospital number, and the nature and site of the operation. History uh, is the first item to be taken from the patient. His medical history with special attention to chest, which is very important and must be seen by a specialist, heart, renal, and hepatic uh, functions. Uh, the drug history must be taken. Some drugs should be continued till the end of the surgery, for example, steroids, cardiac drugs, bronchodilators, and antihypertensives. Um, <clears throat> Allergies should also be noted. Third uh, point is the previous exposure to surgery and anesthesia, dates, type, adverse reactions, difficult intubation, prolonged apnea or delayed recovery, because a patient may suffer a prolonged apnea before uh, from muscle relaxant that is called saxinylcholine, which is a short-acting muscle relaxant. If the patient suffers from this, he has to be uh, to know and to to carry a card with this uh, uh, information. <coughs> Habits of the patient must be noted. For example, addiction, which is a drug specific, uh, so he will not be worried about uh, going to sleep during anesthesia or not. And the patient should not stop it before surgery as it will cause fatal withdrawal symptoms. He must take his doses regularly. Smoking also is uh, a bad habit that causes bronchorrhea which means increased secretions of the tracheal uh, tract and bronchi. Uh, these uh, secretions are a good medium of post-operative chest infection. It also decreases hemoglobin oxygen saturation level of the patient. <clears throat> Family history is important to know about accidents happened to one of his family members before under anesthesia because there is a hereditary disease called malignant hyperthermia. Uh, this disease is manifested by a severe attack of tachycardia, arrhythmia, and rigidity of the skeletal muscles with a temperature uh, that can reach a very high level like um, <clears throat> about 40 degrees centigrade. This is a fatal condition and we have to know about it. Secondly, we make a physical examination. Chest examination is the first, of course. Uh, heart also is very important to hear uh, the rate, rhythm and murmurs. Arterial blood pressure is very important and venous pressure. Airway assessment to anticipate difficulty some of the methods are neck mobility. I, ha I have to be sure that he can extend his neck enough. Lower jaw size. People uh, suffering from micrognathia uh, 
uh, are difficult to uh, intubate and abil ability of mouth opening he has to open his mouth in front of me and I see it is enough to introduce the laryngoscope and tube state of, of dentition loose crowned or damaged teeth have the possibility of damage during in endotracheal intubation <clears throat> nutritional state is important either malnourished or obese patient obese patients suffer during induction and recovery from anesthesia skin color pallor jaundiced or cyanosed laboratory investigations there are two uh, levels of investigations done to the patient standard tests that are for fit uh, patient these are hemoglobin concentration bleeding and coagulation times uh, in younger uh, patients children or young adults uh, we uh, add fasting blood sugar blood urea and creatinine and ECG uh, over 40 years old patient more investigations are ordered according to patient condition chest x-ray respiratory function or blood gas analysis in chronic obstructive pulmonary disease also cardiac patients have to make uh, I may need uh, echocardiography or something more also A kind preoperative visit may reduce patient's anxiety. Any disease should be treated before elective procedures to reach the best possible state of good health. We have to control blood pressure of the patient, control his diabetic state by shifting from oral hypoglycemics into insulin, soluble insulin injection before surgery, and uh, Every disease has to be treated to, uh, to reach the optimum condition of this patient. Emergency procedures, uh, uh, unfortunately, we can't sometimes delay the operation until uh, have a good uh, situation. Preparation before surgery immediately before surgery an informed consent should be signed by the patient or parents of a child or a cooperative patient he must be fasting for six hours for an adult and two hours for a child after a liquid meal this is because the emptying time is uh, three hours for solid food but during states of worry and disease emptying time is prolonged so we will make it six hours sometimes it is prolonged more than this so before six hours he has to take a light meal this is to avoid aspiration of gastric contents <coughs> uh, which happen between loss of reflexes and separation of the airway Aspiration of acidic stomach contents results in chemical pneumonitis. This is a severe condition and may be fatal in a good majority of the patients. Dentures, jewelry, lip and nail colors must be removed. Standard hospital operating gowns are worn by the patient. He doesn't have to uh, wear something tight. Pre-medication are ordered to reduce the fear and anxiety of the patient, to reduce salivary and bronchial secretions, to prevent vagal reflexes like bradycardia. Also, increased secretion are considered a parasympathetic reflex. Facilitation of induction of anesthesia, because the patient may, is calm, sedated, uh, and may need less induction dose decrease anesthetic requirements all over the surgery reduction of hemodynamic response to tracheal intubation that is a sympathetic stimulation also decrease post-operative nausea and vomiting decrease acidity of stomach contents in emergency patients 
Drugs used for pre-medication are benzodiazepines, uh, one of them. These drugs are given to reduce anxiety of the patient. They will sedate the patient and sometimes some patients go to sleep before surgery. Diazepam is the father drug. It is a fat-soluble drug and it is metabolized by the liver. Its first metabolite is active. This is why it has a hangover effect. <clears throat> the dose is 10 to 15 mg given orally before two hours before surgery. Midazolam, a water-soluble drug, is given in a dose of 2 mg orally also, and it is excreted by the kidney. Opioids, this is the second group of pre-medicant drugs, are used for pre-operative pain and to decrease anesthetic requirements and to decrease hemodynamic response to tracheal intubation. Morphine is a natural derivative of opium, is the mother drug of this group. It is a powerful analgesic and respiratory depressant drug. It causes histamine release, so it must not be used in asthmatic patients. It causes constipation, so it must not be used in a hernia operation because uh, um, straining postoperative may rupture the sutures. It causes nausea and vomiting also. It is uh, given 0.1 mg per kilogram intramuscular before operation. Pethidine is a syn synthetic opioid with less analgesic and also respiratory depressant drug. Anticholinergic drugs, these are used to decrease parasympathetic effects like increased secretions, bradycardia, and bronchospasm. They are not used until required. Uh, atropine sulfate is the first one. It crosses the blood-brain barrier and causes cerebral stimulation. It decreases salivary and bronchial secretions, causing dry mouth. Sweating inhibition can cause face flushing in children and may lead to hyperthermia in some cases. It is a bronchodilator. It causes tachycardia. The dose is 0.6 mg intramuscular one hour before surgery. Scopolamine crosses blood-brain barrier and causes sedation. Scopolamine is better tolerated by aged persons. Atropine, uh, I'm sorry, Scopolamine is not tolerated by aged persons. It causes delirium to them. Atropine is well tolerated by uh, elderly. It causes less tachycardia but more dryness. Glycopyrrolate does not cross the blood-brain barrier. It causes less tachycardia than atropine and more dryness. Other drugs that are used uh, with pre-medical drugs, especially in emergency patients, are drugs that decrease the acidity of the stomach. Uh, 